Well, I've had a rough week. My allergies have been bothering me. This change, so you'll have to forgive me. In fact, I've got to grab my water real quick. But more than that, my wife's been gone. So she's coming back today. I don't function well without her, you know. So it's just been me, been me and Isaac. He's not my wife. <laughs> We've been eating out a lot. <clears throat> I gotta be honest, this message, I don't know if it's been a, a struggle this week because of a uh, reason we'll get into here, or if it's a my wife gone or allergies, whatever it is, but um, I've been a little bit of a week with this, but I hope you'll be encouraged by it. And uh, so to kind of set this all up, tell you where my mind and study was at. And again, I think you'll find this all pretty fascinating as it all comes together. We're obviously, we're in our study of Romans, but it's going to take a second before we get there. So Daniel chapter 10, you don't have to turn there, just listen. Daniel described a time when he saw a vision. And the vision was so intense, the Bible says it left him weak from it. And it was a vision that was talking about uh, really end time stuff, prophecy stuff, and wars and famines and harsh times, the Bible talks about. He began praying and fasting. The Bible says he prayed for three weeks, 21 days. And then the Bible says that while he's standing on the bank of the Tigris River, that's somewhere in modern day Iraq, you guys have probably heard of that. <clears throat> Daniel saw the resemblance of a man. And the Bible says that this man, and, and let me point out, you should read this for yourself, Daniel chapter 10. Some believe it's pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. Some believe it's an angel. You read Daniel chapter 10 and, and figure it out for yourself what you think. All right, There's views that support both. But Daniel sees this man, and again, everything he saw so intense left him without strength. The Bible says he grew pale, and he felt weak, and um, he basically went to the ground face first. The Bible says when he heard the man speak, this is what it says. It says his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. He heard that voice. He fell to the ground. The Bible says the man reached out and touched him and helped him part way up. I was very specific, helped him up to his knees and his hands. He's kind of on all fours there for a second. And then the man says this to Daniel. And I want to read this, so just, just listen real close here, okay? We're kind of setting this up, but it's fascinating. <clears throat> the man said to me, Daniel writes, Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I've been sent to you. Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. But for 21 days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom, Persia. Now I want you to think about that. When Daniel began praying for understanding of this intense vision he had seen and trying to make sense of it, heaven heard his prayer, heaven responded. Heaven, whether it's Jesus pre-incarnate or an angel, dispatched the answer to that prayer, the word, to Daniel. Heaven wasn't the only one to respond. Because the Bible tells us from Satan's evil stronghold, a demonic spirit, the prince of Persia, tried to thwart the word, the answer, getting to Daniel for 21 days. Heaven sent Michael, an archangel, to fight with the demonic spirit while the messenger went on to reveal to Daniel what the vision was about. Now, I'm not telling you any <clears throat> fictional story here. That's what happened. It's as it happened, and again, you can read about it in Daniel chapter 10. It's really fascinating, but it, it tells you there's a, 
there was a spiritual battle that began when Daniel began to pray for understanding what had been revealed to him. You know, you and I, we're not always aware of the spiritual battle going on around us. Right? You and I, we can watch the news. We see those kind of spiritual battles, right? The attacks on Christianity and Christian beliefs, all that stuff. And that's all, I mean, obviously it's true. It is attacks. But you and I are in a spiritual warfare every day, every moment of the day, and don't even realize it at times. The Bible says this, Ephesians 6, 12, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. <clears throat> you and I, as believers, if we could have that veil on our spiritual eyes open for a little bit, well, probably what happened with Daniel would happen to us. We'd probably lose our strength, be weak, and fall down, right? I know one thing that would for sure happen. We'd live different. We would have different priorities. Our prayers would be different. And your and my faith would be lived out different in our lives if we truly saw what was going on in that spiritual warfare. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-4, just listen, says this, says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. <coughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not flesh, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. There's a spiritual war going on, evil versus good, wickedness versus righteousness, faithful versus faithless, hell against heaven, Satan against Jesus and anything that's his. And there are strongholds that need to come down. And now we get to Romans chapter 8, verse 26. <coughs> so that's the introduction. That's going to set it all up here. I've got a part. <laughs> it's going to be a struggle today for people, but it's all good. Romans 8, 26 and 27. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. You and I ought to find it very reassuring that the Holy Spirit helps us. In all areas that we're weak, the Holy Spirit gives us strength. We should find it reassuring that the Holy Spirit that lives within us intercedes on our behalf. That's what that verse says. <clears throat> you and I, we're wrestling against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this age. We're not wrestling alone. The Holy Spirit's there with us, lives in us, fights for us. Some of you, the very fact that you're sitting here is the fact that the Holy Spirit fought for you, right? Let's be honest. The Holy Spirit knows all about the strongholds that need to come down in our life, in this world, our community, our nation. He knows what we're up against even when we don't. Paul used prayer as an example of the Holy Spirit here. That verse 26, look at that again. <clears throat> for example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. What does God want us to pray for? You know what you want to pray for. It just comes down to three things, people. Health, wealth, happiness. That covers it, doesn't it? And even in that order. Health, wealth, and happiness. And sometimes as long as you get the first two, well, then you know you'll be happy. Right? Says all the healthy, wealthy people. What's God want us to pray for? According to Paul, we don't know. Now, there's a little catch here. Didn't Jesus tell us what to pray for? I mean, it's Matthew chapter 6. Pray like this, Jesus said. He gave us an example for prayer, a template. Our Father was heard in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. I mean, yes, again, 
He taught about prayer. He gave us that model, that template of prayer. But listen, there's a lot of unknowns you and I just don't know. Now, have you ever come across that word? You know, you guys have your just everyday prayers, right? Pray for yourself. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your kids. You kind of go through the list. You know? Do sometimes you ever think, man, I get tired of repeating this? I do. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I'm just like, God, it, it's not that I'm wanting something new to pray about, but I'm tired of it. you got to be tired of hearing from me on it. Just like on repeat, right? <clears throat> we face a lot of unknowns. You know, young people, should I date this person or that person? Should I marry this person or that person? Should I take this job, stay where I'm at, buy this car or this house? Some of you, Lord, should I buy this boat? Okay, I should. <laughs> Should I see this doctor? Should I accept his her diagnosis or look elsewhere? Right? Should I do this or do that? You're and I, I prayer. My prayer. It's a lot of should I and shouldn't I, isn't it? And we're not talking about morally right and wrong things. Those should never even come up in a prayer, right? I've heard, I'm not saying people here, but in, over my ministry, I've heard people literally tell me about the sin they've prayed about, and then God's given them grace to go ahead and do it. Okay, you got a different God than I've got. Right? I'm not talking about the morally right and wrong stuff. You know that stuff. I'm talking about these unknown decisions, these things that come up in life, how to handle situations every day whether they're big or small, or listen, all the way up to strongholds in life. We don't always know what God wants us to pray for. We don't sometimes know how to pray. Worse yet, we don't always take the time to pray. And that's a tragedy, especially when we go to these verses today in Romans chapter 8, when we realize the Holy Spirit is pleading and helping us, that ought to motivate us to pray. Right? James 4, 2, 3. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Isn't that, didn't James just sum it up? You don't pray and you pray with the wrong heart. Wrong motives. Wrong desires. When we pray a lot of times, our prayers are biased, they're skewed. We pray for the result we want, right? God, if you can just do this, and then we sprinkle faith, I know that you can. I know you can give me exactly what I want. You feel pretty good about those prayers, don't you? But it's not necessarily what God wants, right? Listen, each of us, I'm included in this. We ought to thank God that God didn't answer all of our prayers. Right? Huh. Some of you, aside from salvation, the Holy Spirit's greatest work has been not answering what you've been praying for. <laughs> Someone wrote this. <clears throat> Just very clever. They said we pray selfishly, ignorantly, narrowly. That's so true. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The Bible says pray about everything. Every move you make, every need you have, every decision ought to be bathed in prayer. You shouldn't be like the world. You know, the world, everybody that's of the world that's not of God, they can make decisions just like that. You and I sometimes, when somebody says something or asks you something, you, need, you, you probably ought to say, you know what, I need to pray about that. <laughs> Not to be spiritually righteous, but to get some wisdom from God. Right? <laughs> Don't just automatically give a yay or nay. Pray about it. That's what we're supposed to do. 
Listen, you and I don't always know the strongholds we're facing. We don't always know the strongholds. Since Paul's telling us <coughs> that we don't know what God wants us to pray for, does that get us off the hook? I mean, why bother to pray then? God, I don't know what to pray for, so whatever I need, you just you know, take care of it. Someone said this, the commentator of old, he who prays receives help from the Spirit of God, but he who prays not receives no such help. You know, Paul's given us this instruction not to keep us from praying, not to discourage us in praying, but to motivate us. Just the opposite. He's imploring us that, hey, listen, when you have this knowledge of the Holy Spirit's role in your life, he isn't only there to, to seal you until the day of your redemption, salvation, but he's in there to work, and he's constantly working. <laughs> Even while you're sleeping, the Bible says, what? God never sleeps, never slumbers. He's working. It should cause us all the more to want to pray, desire to pray, be motivated to pray, seek his will in our prayers. Verse 26 again, Romans 8. <coughs> and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, was my pastor. I brought his name up many times, Dan Weaver, a missionary. He's in Belize right now. <coughs> I remember going to his office one day, again, many years ago. And uh, I would often, he probably got tired of me, I would often, before work, I'd just pop in. I just, man, church, I just wanted to be there. <laughs> you know. One morning I popped in and he was telling me, that that morning he was working on his message and he just had a just a sudden urge he was all alone there in his office and just a sudden urge just the Holy Spirit you need to pray for your two sons right now and he said you know he didn't, the only thing was going on they were going to school you know and he said he began to just pray and after a few moments he got a phone call from one of them and his two kids that morning had been in a car wreck. One of them went through the windshield. But they were okay. To this day, that one son is still picking glass out of his forehead. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> but he was just so overwhelmed that God spoke to him and said, Your sons need prayer right now. Don't tell me the Spirit's not working. Spirit knows what he's doing. You and I have got to be sensitive to the Spirit speaking to us. And you and I need to understand how powerful prayer is. Right? We talked a couple of weeks ago about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Constant communication, communing, communicating about you. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. James 5, verse 13. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Verse 14, are you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you've committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. You know, some of you have hardships. Some of you need healing, physical, emotional. Some of you, many of you, maybe all of us, there's strongholds that need to come down. Our family, our marriages, our kids' lives, grandchildren's lives, country, community, school, generation. Strongholds of sin, strongholds of addictions, apathy, faith, faithlessness, bitterness, unforgiving spirit. You know, I can go on with the list. Wrong motivations. There are strongholds, strongholds of opposition against Christians, against <clears throat> what you and I believe, what Scripture teaches against His Word. And there are strongholds that need to come down. The Bible says, James chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, Elijah was a human as we are. Understand those words. 
Elijah was awesome. <laughs> but he was just a man, as you and I were. So in knowing that, understand what the scripture here says. It says, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. <clears throat> Listen, those verses are telling us you and I ought to be Elijah-like prayer warriors in bringing down strongholds. Strongholds come down when people of God pray earnestly. So only thing you find in that verse there about Elijah. It didn't say because he was a prophet this happened. Now, it's true that Elijah did everything God told him to do. All right. But again, it was a spirit working, revealing to Elijah what he should be praying for. But the key there is, again, that earnest. Earnest means sincere, intense conviction. And listen, I just want you to think about it. I want you to just, you know, be honest with yourself. Is that how you pray? Do you pray, do you pray earnestly? Intense conviction. Second Chronicles 7, 14, you all know this verse. <clears throat> and if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and restore their land. Listen, you not, may not always know what God wants you to pray for. Again, according to Paul, we know. Because how, how could we? How could my former pastor and friend know to pray for his son? You know, how would he know? He didn't know. But since the Spirit told him how he should pray. Listen, do you want heaven to fight for the answer to your prayer? I want you to think about that. The moment Daniel begins praying, heaven started fighting for that answer to prayer. 21 days. You and I wonder sometimes why prayer, why answers to our prayer take a while. <laughs> you don't realize, yeah, the battle. The battle that's going on. You think that you just offer up the prayer for your grandkids to come and know the Lord and there's no battle? Right? The key in that verse, keys to that verse, talks about humbleness, genuine and honest. You know what God just wants? He wants just genuineness, honesty, right? Just honest. Probably a lot of times you and I don't want to be honest because we don't like that look, right? <laughs> the same front you put on with everybody else in the community, even in the church, it's the same look you put on with God. You got that Christian spiritual righteousness. Hello, God. Here I am. <laughs> he knows you, right? Be honest. And then in that, again, Second Chronicles, what does it say? It says pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray about everything. Seek my face. What's that talking about? Align yourself to his will. <laughs> There's the big one. Align yourself to his will will. Not yours. His. Turn from wicked ways. Turn from sin. Can't run from the devil and expect to be delivered from him, right? Verse 26, 27 again. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. <clears throat> God's will is what you and I should always be praying for that in harmony with agreement. Listen, if you want what God wants, then His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will will be done in your life. You will see strongholds come down and you'll see answer to prayer like you've never seen before. 
you'll witness heaven move all kind of obstacles <laughs> to have your prayers answered, being in harmony with what he wants. Listen, when you think about you know, heaven fighting evil demonic forces and answer your prayer. That that's easy for you and I to get fired up on. Sarah, come on up here. <clears throat> right? That's easy. That gets the the spiritual blood within us. Let's take down the strongholds, right? But you have to understand the biggest stronghold of opposition you face is probably you. Yeah. Right? Probably you. And it all has to do with that harmony of God's will. Right? If I got what I wanted, I was supposed to be President of the United States. I was supposed to have all the money in the world. I was in Idaho Falls, Idaho, a setup manager for Sam's Club, and somebody there looked at me and said, are you going to be a preacher? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Some point, God got his will for my life. But it's been awesome. When your will becomes his will, there is nothing like it. I'm not going to say I'm not perfect at all. There's a lot more strongholds that need to come down in me. We don't know how to pray. That shouldn't stop us from praying. There are strongholds. I'm encouraged by those verses because what's really saying is the spirit that lives in you and intercedes on your behalf takes down strongholds. Right? The strongholds don't have to stand. Be sensitive in the spirit. Right? Pray for his will. Pray earnestly. Pray genuinely. Be honest. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. Mash it back Are you earnest in your prayers? Is it just health, wealth, and happiness? And I'm not saying you can't pray for those things. You ought to pray for your health. The Bible tells us to. Paul's really saying this. Listen, your prayers need to be motivated by the will of the Father, the will of the Spirit. <laughs> when you pray in harmony of God's working and what He's doing, because you and I don't know the spiritual battle that's going on. We can't see it. But know it's there. When we pray in harmony, then those strongholds start coming down. We'll see people come to know the Lord. We'll see addictions given up. We'll see marriages restored. We'll see health restored. We'll see all kinds of things happen if we pray the way we're supposed to pray. Are you willing to be that kind of Elijah-like prayer warrior? And see strong now. Strong ones come down in people's lives and in yours. Are you willing to align your will with his? Fathers, we come before you. <coughs> God, we love you. God, we thank you so much for your word. God, it is challenging to us, dear God. We God, we have a taste of the power of prayer. But, oh God, if we could just be completely surrendered to you, we're nothing but your will is what we want. 100% God, what you would do with that. God, help us be that kind of people, that kind of church, that kind of believer, dear God. God, let us pray and see heaven respond and fight. But again, it all for your glory and all the life that you will. 
Lord, we love you. God, we thank you. Continue to speak. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. Listen, I want to encourage you, challenge you. You go home, read Daniel chapter 10. You can read 10, 11, and 12, but 10 especially, because it talks about this, and I couldn't give you all the details. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. So go home and read it, all right? And then I'd be curious, you tell me if it's Jesus pre-incarnate or an angel. I have my views, but we won't know until we get to heaven. There's a lot of reasons that support both, but uh, it's a fascinating, fascinating read of that in chapter 10. So, all right. I'm not going to go through all the announcements again. <clears throat> Probably the biggest thing on deadline is just the t-shirt thing. Sign up, put your size there. We don't have to have any money now or anything. Just, uh, we want you to have a t-shirt. It'd be really cool to maybe wear these on uh, for the solid days, right? That'd be pretty cool. Hopefully, we'll just only need a t-shirt that day, right? Not, oh, yeah. not the sweatshirt ones, but never know how it'll go. All right. Don't forget, be in prayer for Kathy and her family with her mother Janet passing away. And uh, people, let me just say it again. I'm not preaching another message here, but... Every one of you has some struggles that need to come down, right? Maybe it's not even in your own life, but in your family, your kids, your grandkids, whatever, right? The Spirit of God, as a believer, lives in you. Pleads on your behalf. Is there to bring down the strongholds. Don't forget that. It's not your power, it's not your glory. But it is that power living in you for His glory. Right? That whole message today is a message of victory <laughs> and not of fear. Right? Victory. Let's go out and live that victory, right? Pray on this. All right, let's close. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your word. Continue to speak to us, dear God. God, let us be victors. All for your glory. Jesus Christ, Amen.